Hi everyone, I am Brian Mullins the Fox. Welcome to the first ever pre-scripted, recorded, and edited episode of the Brian Mullins the Fox Show, or episode number five. This episode is about how knowledge is power and those that fail to prove the opposite has the special effect of people literally making AI-generated audio bits, cloning your voice, sucking them off. They genuinely want and need a low cow so bad, yet every time they try, it gets less and less funny. As if it was ever funny at all, which it wasn't really. Really? There will be clips of me responding to Gallagher and Pooh. There will also be me explaining how Gallagher really shot himself in the foot. So without further ado, let's get cracking. The way Gallagher shot himself in the foot is also the same reason why he opted for confirmation bias after twisting my words, because he can't separate the roast game or the real phenomenon that happened from the hypothetical intervention scenario in which you confronted a random family member in an interview slash intervention that made them freak the fuck out, which is the hypothetical event, which isn't real. You can't conflate the two. If you're going to try and make it seem like that I admitted I was wrong when I wasn't, don't twist my words or put words in my mouth. Don't use AI to clone my voice to say shit I didn't say. The fact that I don't have to do any of that is entirely indicative of the fact that I'm not a manipulator in any way, shape, or form. That's entirely indicative of the fact that I'm not a shitlord. The irony of being one is at least my shit sticks. Their common shitlord shit typically doesn't. You don't give up because it's over. You just know it's over because you never gave up. What Gallagher did was try to fit a square peg in a round hole. And he failed, obviously, because he himself knows that he's lying to himself and others. He tried to prove me wrong by only confirming his bias in the most retarded and ass-backwards way imaginable. I don't have to be a lol cow myself to know that when you try to force one, it never ends well. Especially when you have to generate one by using AI. AI BMTF is the lol cow here. The actual one or me isn't, because I'm not a lol cow. Even when you aren't one, which I'm not, like I just said, this makes a lol cow culture the most redundant one ever. Because if you're going to milk a lol cow, have the lol cow be real in the first place. You don't have to make up anything to know that what you're claiming is true. Blind faith is useless because it takes something actually being true to know what is true. If you have to fake my voice by using AI in this context at all, you lost the war before it began in everybody's eyes. Well, it feels great to know I never actually admitted that I was quote-unquote wrong when I wasn't. Expect more fake low cows in the future. Given that you can just make up a situation where you are actually at a loss, and then have to AI clone my voice so that where my AI character or the AI version of myself can be your low cow, in quotations, for actually proving you wrong, and presto, content. Oh wait, you expected a response to me from him, didn't you? He chickened out. He realized that it takes effort to actually and objectively refute arguments, meaning that even if he makes his quote-unquote video on me at all, I highly doubt it. It's not what I expect. So I'm not going to waste my own time on that nonsense, but I'll talk about what's been going on as of late. Number one, most importantly, Gallagher and I had a back and forth or two that went absolutely nowhere because Gallagher only wanted to confirm what he wanted to believe is true or confirmation bias in the first post roast game debacle ever and for the other one, he falsely accused me of hiding evidence and Grigela for hiding evidence that she doesn't have against Lyo directly. Number two, Gilded Pooh has been kind of cringe posting as of late in general. And three, nothing else has been happening as of late. I am now closing the door on Gilded Pooh. 
Gallagher, and other idiots who fail to recognize that when people like you don't have a worthwhile response to consider or a new argument that doesn't sound like one I've debunked or even addressed from 2019, the conversation is pretty much over and dead. So don't be running your mouth about this topic if you're gonna do shit like that. And that does mean I'm telling you people to keep your mouths fucking shut at this point if you know nothing about the topic or are just gonna spout bullshit off about me. Although I will suggest you, people who are unbiased and neutral, to watch a bunch of videos. And it goes as follows, and will be linked in the description box down below. The Roast Game, Numbers by the Year, 1998 to 2016. Hypothetical Christmas Dinner, Numbers by the Year, 1998 to 2016. Christmas Dinner, the entire multi-series, 1900 to 2023. The Roast Game, Families by the Number Theory. The Roast Game, Christmas Dinner Price Paradox. The Roast Game, A Final Look from 2021. And finally, my research compilation. So, here's the rant. The past week or so has been really fucking annoying me, with Gallagher, Gilded Poo, and others cringe posting, saying nothing worthwhile to even consider, and pestering me to debate me, bro. If I already said no, then take no for an answer. If you thought it was going to be a waste of time, then why the fuck were you pestering me? Why the fuck was anyone pestering me to come on in your dog shit server, Gilded? All you want is content. All you want is a lol cow to define all lol cows. Yet, you force it every fucking time. And even those that are lol cows seem forced, just like content coming from those lol cows are as forced in humor as current day contagious laughter compilations. And there's a good reason why I stopped watching those Contagious Laughter compilations for a while. Hopefully, they'll find something new and find something interesting to present to the world. I'm not a fan of low cow channels. In fact, I kind of hate them. But all that aside, fuck Gilded Poo, fuck Gallagher, fuck Pootopia, fuck any irrational conspiratorial coward that would want to pester me to debate him or Gallagher or anybody else. And fuck anybody that's willing to run their mouth only to shoot their faces off proverbially of course, and say nothing of value, leaving me no choice but to ignore you. But for those who aren't these people that I've mentioned and listed, I'm Brian Mullins the Fox, signing out. Sorry about this, it's just the first time in like five years that anybody has ever tried to respond or counter my points, only to fail and say the same shit five years later. I want to make it abundantly clear, the situation highlighted in the Will Tester hypothetical is completely separate from the roast game, meaning that the roast game as a past phenomenon was proverbially in the background. The roast game happened while the hypothetical situation, or the intervention and interview, where you confront a family member in this instance, didn't. Hence why the Will Tester hypothetical is a hypothetical. I didn't contradict myself at all, it's just that some people are just too biased and or stupid to get that. Okay, how am I insane to you, Oliver? You're the fat bastard that tries to explain the quote-unquote joke of using AI to clone my voice to make me say shit I didn't really record to say, and expecting people not to believe in you or anyone else that did it. That quote-unquote joke never really is a joke, because it never lands. The punchline is completely shit, non-existent, and isn't funny. If it lands to you, I'm sorry, but you're an NPC. How are you not insane for forcing and faking a lol cow? Sure, I wrote that cringy autobiography, the creepy creepypasta, fanfic and said things you find quote-unquote insane, but that's besides the point. If you really have to explain the quote-unquote joke to me like I'm so mentally disabled that I'm unable to find anything funny, not only are you really ableist with that approach, but also it's not really a joke for people to get when you people are the only ones falling for your own bait. Meaning that I'm so perfectly capable of not manipulating people, I've made people who hate me intentionally fake a lol cow all because they got butthurt that I gave a trans woman a chance. Some jokes may be wordy at times, but sometimes it's necessary for it to be. Hence why you need to explain the meme in a way where it doesn't kill off the joke or ruin the punchline. You see memes left and right specifying people in certain dramas, political, financial, and even social contexts. Then, you also see those same memes specify the situation. If you're just memeing on people without giving proper context or analyzing the situation by using said meme for that purpose, you're just as unfunny as people who try to force and fake a lol cow as if they ever were funny. Even when people don't force or fake lol cows, lol cow culture is shit because it's ironic. Meaning that people who do take lol cow culture so seriously that it's their go-to as it responds when they're losing an argument are the real lol cows. It's just a shame that a lol cow doesn't need to be human anymore. This is what happens when your opposition is unable to to make new arguments that matter, because you put actions and research behind your claims and words. Do what I do. Make a claim, don't hesitate to back them up, 
and don't expect people to automatically believe in you. This is what happens when you understand that you can't convince every single person in the world of your claims. It's not a requirement or an obligation. It's a necessity of logic and a fact of life. It's not my fault that I have enemies. For even some of my enemies know when to move on. This is what happens when you prove and demonstrate that knowledge is power. And those that don't use knowledge as power are bound to be ignorant. Twenty-five years ago, on November 17th, 1998, in both America and Canada, in the wake of the renewed panics of demoralization against their own children and culture, after the Jim Henson Company and Hallmark Entertainment bought out Odyssey TV, which later became Hallmark TV, in August of 2001, parents and families alike decided to rebel against this cultural shift and impact this had towards them for some fucking reason by taking their own children's lives and later used their leftover butt meat as the alternative centerpiece of Christmas dinner for 1998 which then began the roast game era since November 17th, 1998, all the way up until it ended on December 25th, 2016, the last roast game Christmas to ever have taken place in both countries. Around the same time, likely on the same note, Christmas Carol movies were the absolute rage of the public, especially released on video cassettes and DVDs. But here is what led up to the beginning of the roast game era, 1998 to 2016. And you may be asking, what led up to the Roast Game era of 1998 to 2016? Well, I'll tell you. Number one, roast turkeys and hams were wasted disproportionately more than they were consumed by the Christmas of 1997. Number two, for some, they became too expensive for them, despite the fact that back then they were relatively cheap, unlike now. Number three, for some, they didn't taste that good for their taste and liking, even though they had to lie about how they supposedly liked how the Christmas dinner tasted, and despite the fact that there was this holiday holiday tradition, traditional Christmas dinner itself. Number four, they'd rather prefer a meat choice that's tastier, but can't come from any other animal, much less a pig. Number five, they thought that children were as special. Number six, the religious and family environment became so toxic that not believing in Christmas was enough to have them murdered and their butt meat cut off for Christmas dinner, starting on the Christmas of 1998 for the consumption part. And number seven, they learned from famous cannibals like Jeffrey Dahmer and Albert Fish how to get away with it in many ways. A, they learned how to get away with murder in the most mundanely legal way, in a way where nobody can figure out that a murder behind closed doors took place. And they were nowhere near as nosy as parents, much less law enforcement are now, versus 25 fucking years ago. B, not only does the murderer get to eat Christmas dinner with the family members who have not engaged in the murder, nor the desecration of the corpse, be it a mother or a father, single or other Otherwise, all the while, having little to no problem doing so without intimidation. See, not to murder them publicly or out in the fucking open to where people can see it. D, not to try to cover it up, because covering it up backfired badly for both Dahmer and Fish. And finally, E, let all the decomposing human matter decompose on their own to the point where they're basically non-existent and can't be traced back to either the mother or the father within the uncontrollable nature of the situation and environment slash family that encompassed it. And this was all prior to November 17th, 1998, 25 years ago, a day that I consider a breaking point. Not because it's close to Black Friday, but there were a lot of other things that happened as well. On an unrelated yet odd note, like I've mentioned earlier, on November 16th, 1998, the Jim Henson Company and Hallmark Entertainment, already partners in television ventures, took over 45% ownership of the Odyssey Channel, according to the New York Times. In August of 2001, Crown Media relaunched Odyssey as the Hallmark Channel, and much of the Henson programming was discontinued, and they were promptly replaced with over-emotional, super-contrived, fake-ass Christmas-related movies, carols, and other sorts of fucking cartoons that are played over and over again ad nauseum. 
It was at that point, literally or not, that it was not about life as we live it anymore, even for children. It was pushed down your throat day in and day out. At that point, Muppets were even more demonized and fed the imagination of those who believe or have believed in something similar to the Satanic Panic. Muppet as an insult originated from when The Muppet Show was launched in the 70s. Much less ever since the show was launched in the 70s. Right around, or if not, after the time in the pre-roast game era that hams and turkeys were being consumed less and less and wasted more and more. But all of that didn't really have the influence it had, much less the impact, until that very day on November 16th, 1998, followed up by the day after. The next day, other Christmas Carol movies, be it theatrical or direct-to-video, blew the fuck up and became a hot trend around that time. This was coincidentally, or not, emphasis on not, in conjunction with what will have undoubtedly been the greatest and longest bloodbath for the dumbest of reasons, for not believing in Christmas. Now, when you think about all of that, who or what do you really think is special in the end? Nobody, of course. Absolutely nobody. And you all wonder why families had to act like complete and utter fucking Muppets? It's just a downright fucking silly reason for them to take their children's lives, isn't it? And it's even far more retarded than I ever thought. How? And really, what caused this culture shock in the first place? All because a bunch of fucking Muppets trivialized their very existence, I guess. All of this, to sum it up, was because of culture shock. You know, the very reason why the roast game happened at all? That is the exact culture shock that caused the roast game era to begin right around the time Christmas carols really blew up, near the end of the second millennium. And now here's the off script rant. So let me get this straight. Let me sum it up all for you before I really go off on a passionate rant. So, I'm going to have to process this much more clearly than I ever thought, since I just realized the exact, exact reason and what the literal fucking culture shock was to have caused the roast game era to ever begin was because of the Jim Henson Company, the company named after the very guy that brought you Muppets and Hallmark Entertainment, the very company that brought you Christmas cards and other assorted Christmas things. When they combined Muppets and Christmas stuff for a channel that wasn't named the Hallmark Channel until August of 2001? If it wasn't Culture Shock, they would have had the channel named the Hallmark Channel almost immediately. But this is Culture Shock, and given the outrage all this shit caused, of course, in conjunction with everything else I've mentioned, holy shit! Jesus fucking Christ! Seriously, people? The guy who brought you Muppets really fucked you over? It really did your head in? Even though he's been dead for fucking decades? Really? And for all I know, I don't even know what the fuck the Odyssey Channel was. Oh, the Muppets are not real after all. I guess that kind of fucking did that for a reason. Especially despite the fact that there is a Muppets Christmas Carol movie. There's been multiple Christmas-related Muppets movies, show, episodes, and others. Culture Shock would have never occurred at that time. For those who don't know, the Odyssey Channel was a religious channel when it comes to Sunday, as much as it's religious for all the other days of the week, with all the other religious stuff. And Christmas happens to be a very religious holiday, if not the most religious holiday of the year in America and Canada. Why I bring up the Muppets? Because the kids love the Muppets and some kids hate them. Even a few or so kids back then were afraid of the Muppets. And the main reason why these extremely Christian parents hate the Muppets so damn much? Because they think they're satanic and would supposedly teach the kids to do the unholy nasty and start questioning beliefs and Christmas. They start questioning the existence of Jesus. They start questioning the existence of God. They start questioning the existence of flying reindeer, talking snowmen, Santa Claus and his flying nine reindeer, and so on and so forth. Maybe that's why there was such a conflict that cannibalism had to have been involved. You're never gonna take these children alive, you Muppets! And you certainly can never take them alive while making Christmas seem like a fucking afterthought. Don't have our kids question God, question Christmas, have them all fucking comply! Arrgh! It had to have been before November 17th, 1998. It just had to have been. I am shocked beyond fucking belief. 
If it weren't for the Jim Hansen Company, none of the culture shock shit would happen at all. All because people are fucking paranoid about the Muppets degenerating their kids and apparently teaching them to do the unholy nasty shit. Despite that being a retarded reason, of course. If I really found out so much sooner, years earlier, I would have had a fucking laughing fit at how fucking stupid this is. Jesus Christ. Children started to question their beliefs because of this move. If Muppets are not real, that means I would have to question my own beliefs and yours. And a lot of them love the Muppets. A lot of them hate the Muppets. But the Muppets have fuck all to do with why Culture Shock even exists. For the same reason why the roast game happened at all. It wasn't caused by the Muppets directly. Not really, not at all. And since the Muppets aren't real people but fictional characters, and given that Hallmark Entertainment and Crown Media are Christmas related and Christmas themed. That's how I explain it. I cannot believe for the fucking life of me all because of a Christmas themed company and a company named after the man who gave you all fucking Muppets you really love or hate regardless. Families and parents alike decided to say or do this. Slaughter their fucking children for not believing in Christmas. Cut off their asses. Preserve that ass meat after all the skinning, debacterializing, and all that shit. Put it in the freezer for until Christmas Day and fuck ham, fuck turkey, fuck having traditions. Let's just have it that way. 1998 to 2016. Man, were these people out of their goddamn minds. I'm speechless, I'm fucking speechless. 25 fucking years ago, a quarter of a century. I'm not even 25 yet. This is fucking shocking. That I was born long after the day all this shit really sparked and started a stupidly egregious genocide. All because you can't mix what's real and what's not and what's beloved? Coincidence? I think the fuck not. I don't think it is a coincidence, people. I think that is the reason why the roast game happened. Along with the fact that Christmas carols were becoming a super hot trend then, even though they have existed long before 1998. Strangely enough. Thank you for watching episode 5 of the Brian Mullins the Fox Show. I have been your host, Brian Mullins the Fox, signing out. See you in the next episode sometime in either late February or early March. Bye.